and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Vladimir Hecarim. It's a deck that looks like it's been having some success over from Mobilitics, and some people in chat have been talking about combining these champions and how uh, this deck's been looking good. I, uh, I don't know where it came from, to be honest. Uh, I, don't, I think probably some, another streamer was playing it, so I'm sorry uh, for not um, not knowing that, but. Anyway, uh, it's it's like a, a bigger mid-range deck with Noxus and Shadow Isles, not super aggressive, even though we have aggressive elements. But we got a really good late game. So, you know, we still have, uh, you know, we have Vladimir Hecarim. At the top end, we got Harrowing, because Harrowing with Hecarim is amazing. So we got that really nice combination um, to be able to finish out games. But early on, we got some cool tricks, too. Of course, we have the Crimson Disciple-Imperial Demolitionist combo. We have Curse Keepers in here. The Curse Keepers aren't spectacular, but it, they can do some cool things. Like Curse Keeper with like Transfusion, for example. We can deal one to it, burst speed, create the 4-4, and then suddenly we're attacking with the 4-4 um, whenever our opponent's not expecting it. That's a nice combination. Curse Keeper, you know, can die to like the, the Vladimir trigger, but you don't get to keep attacking with the 4-4, but you can die to, to it with that. We have Crimson Awakener that can kill a Cursed Keeper and create a 4-4 for us. And then, you know, like if we want, we have like Vile Feast, we have Glimpse Beyond, we have that kind of stuff as well. We had two powerful champions at the top end, Rekindler to bring them both back, and then Ruination to bring them back some more. Pretty sweet looking deck. Let's go play some games with Vladimir Hecarim. We're going to go play five games with Ranked. Like we always do. <clears throat> so yeah, first gauntlet's supposed to be this month, and they said the first gauntlet is just going to be normal play. Uh, so we're up to 516. First gauntlet's supposed to just be normal uh, play, like nothing nothing special to the game mode. I'm going to get rid of the Glimpse Beyond and keep all these. Valfi's good against uh, Greenglade Caretaker? Oh, the, the two-man... The two mana, two one, green glade duo, green glade duo. Thanks, fearless god. Thank you, thank you. But this is we're playing against elusives. They don't really kill our things too often, so we don't really need the glimpse beyond. Oh, I can't wait. <clears throat> so the first gauntlet, yeah, supposed to just be normal play, but you just like play and see if you can get to seven wins, kind of thing. Because they're just going to be testing it out, make sure it works. But then after that, the next gauntlet was supposed to be Singleton, where you could only play one of every card. And so you got to play 40 different cards in your deck. Without a sound. Without any sound? Without any sound at all. I just want to say this for Green Glade Duo, but with double Omen Hawk, they're gonna have some some big things. First step the hardest. Bleh. War Mason, reporting for duty. No, uh, no, I would not say everyone just net decks and masters. I would not say that at all. I would, I would say, honestly, masters, you play against a whole lot of different stuff all the time. Honestly, um, Your path ends here. I guess we're gonna be killing our own thing. Hmm. Uh, I guess we're gonna go like this. We're doing this. And I will just Vile Feast this thing. Because there's a lot of people that, like, in Masters rank, like, once they get there, then they're there in Masters. And it doesn't matter, like, at the end of the season whether you're ranked number 200 or number 2000. It doesn't matter. And so there's a lot of people that will get to Masters rank and then start playing crazy stuff. Because it doesn't really matter if you lose and go down in ranking. 
So that's pretty common, honestly. Yeah, the Twisted Vi deck, you have to scroll down on the on the decks. Um, here, I, I can find it for you, though. You just have to scroll down to, like, 16 days ago, because it was... Uh, I wish Mobilitics, like, whenever you update a deck, I wish I put it up to the top, but it doesn't. I don't know. I'm just going to scroll down, hit Control F. Twisted Vi. There it is. All right, I'll just have it up on a, a window here, so I'll be able to link it. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see. I am running out of time. All right, so if I attack, all my stuff dies, and I do four to them and, and gain four, and all my things die. I don't think that that's really that good for me. Let me talk about this thing. I was thinking about just attacking with like the the three two ones and the one one, and not attacking with Vladimir. I think you kind of see more net net decks like a little bit earlier than you do in Masters, honestly. But. Um, also, <clears throat> I've always been one of the camp that nothing really wrong with that text. Not everybody, not everybody has like the creative juices and stuff like that. And one and two, it's there's such a huge wide variety of decks and, and information at our disposal. Like it, it, I think that's kind of, oh, man, I wish I had vengeance. I think it's kind of incorrect to not use it. Like, I think it's, it's good to use information. And you're not always rewarded for playing a net deck either. Playing like an exact list, it's, like whenever I'm playing against a, 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 a net deck or like like a real popular deck that like I know all the cards, it makes it easier because then I know exactly what to play around. So it's um, you do get rewarded for playing some off the wall uh, decks and card choices that people don't know how to play around. So I basically have this turn to kill him. Basically. And it looks like I looks like that I should have just attacked with all the two ones the previous turn and just let them all die. I would have gained another three life, dealt another three damage. Looks like that would have been the better play. We each died then found hope. Okay, so Hecarim brings along two attackers. So that means we need to throw one of these things out there. Wait, why are... Oh, right, those are just dying because they're ephemeral. Okay, never mind. You call that sneaky? <laughs> Don't want any trouble. You call that sneaky? <laughs> Don't want any trouble. It's too late for you. So yeah, could have had it basically could have had an additional two damage and gained two life. Which would have been helpful, which would have been made Noxion Fervor lethal. But now it's not. So a good thing to learn from.
They have a big elusive I'll have vengeance. Vengeance the 6 4. I kind of wanted them to uh, to attack with the Omen Hawk, right? Because I wanted something to die so I'd have more room for harrowing. But all good. Yeah, Twisted Advise real good. That deck. That deck's pretty awesome. Really hope they don't have deny. Yeah, you don't really need two harrowings, as in, like, you don't want to draw two. It, I guess it's um, so that you have a, a higher percentage chance of drawing the first one. Um, but I, I could definitely see just going down to one and not playing the two. I would think that would be perfectly reasonable. Usually their deck plays one Deny, three Will of Ionia. That's like a normal distribution of those cards. Usually there's one Deny um, in their deck. But it's not a great Deny metagame, so it's possible they don't uh, have it in their deck. Hecarim should be the last thing attacking. Hey, high tech. So they should kill him with these crimson packs. Take Forty-two. Negative thirty-eight special. I don't, I don't think there's any card that gets him out of this, so I'm just going to mark the game as a win over here. I'm doing good. Doing good, high tech. Yeah. Great start to the stream. Winning first six games. Tons of people in here. I'm always super excited when we have like 100 viewers. We got 320. That's amazing. Welcome, everybody. If y'all are newer to the channel, uh, this is what I do every day. Play Rune Terra, play four decks a day, put them up on the YouTube channel. I don't play MTG anymore. Nope, just been playing Rune Terra instead. Um, let you know that sometimes with the YouTube channel, the four decks get uploaded at Eastern time, 6 and 11 Eastern. Um, so 6 a.m., 11 a.m., 6 p.m., 11 p.m. every day. And then here on stream, I do I do the earlier stream like this on basically every other day, four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And then I do later stream on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And the later stream starts three hours from now. So we're mulliganing everything. We'll keep calling strike. Like, Vile Feast could, like, kill an Omen Hawk. Meh. <laughs> I don't know if we'll go 20 0 today. That would be nice. That'd be the dream. Ow. I'll try anyone. I think my record for a day is probably... I think we've gone, like, 18-2. I think I went 5-0 twice and 4-1 twice. A day. I think that's my record, but... 
I don't have the best memory, to be honest. Quite annoying. Double black market merchant. Really, the cost reduction. I mean, we just did that a bunch with uh, with Vi. You know, with the twisted Vi deck. I can't complain too much. But yeah, see, zero mana, Crimson Disciple. Yeah. Okay, so what do we want to do? I could kind of play towards Ruination. If I play towards Ruination, I can only spend three mana this turn. Be playing Crimson Disciple. Yeah, whatever. Vendia needs you to pay up. Choices. I hope. <sighs> Dang. I hope they lead with Sejuani next turn. That's like what I'm. That's what I'm really hoping for. Man, they've done a great job leveling up Sejuani. Come on, play Sejuani. 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 Let's do this. Darn. My turn. Let's get to it. Get on the claw. Let's get a good look at you. So I was really hoping for in that ruination. So this puts me down to four. That is so close to, so close to dying. Yeah, they they had a great great hand, um, so that's why I went with the, I went with the risky play to really catch up. Um, by not not playing like Vladimir, last turn, which Vladimir to be honest would only block one additional thing. So basically what I could do here is like have the 2-1 block something else and then Noxion Fervor to try to save an additional 3 life. So we could do there. Twelve. Advent. Come here, handsome. Hello, dear. What have you got us into now? Oh, I'm Lord and Master. I'll be very surprised if we win this game, but it doesn't mean we're not gonna be trying. You must be Lord and you must We're gonna be trying our best. So right now, if I attack like this, see, I'm going to seven. And they take uh, six immediately. I could Vile Feast the one one. No, 
I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna attack like this. You poor thing. You do not doubt. Come here, darling. Put him down to five. Make it harder for them to just attack out. No. I still have Ruination Mana for next turn. Wonder Poro? Where did that come from? Oh, Lonely Poro. Scout and Tough? Dead yet. Never mind. Mm. Well, this doesn't really work, <laughs> but maybe it will. I don't I don't I don't imagine this works. What if these all just fizzle? I don't think it works like this. turns there they could have played into ruination by playing something pre-combat they didn't either time they would have just played something pre-combat either of those times we could have really caught up so that was a still a super close game for how good their hand was i think that's a, a good um you know good showing for our deck Braum. So if I keep one 4 mana 5-5, five five, do I want another 4 mana 5-5? Five five? Like, like turn 4? If I play a 5-5 five five on turn 4, do I just want to play a 5-5 five five on turn 5 as well? That doesn't sound bad. Yeah. I would have Vile Feasted the 1-1, one, one, not the 2-4, as far as Vile Feast goes. But yeah, maybe we would have had... You know, you just, just don't know how those those are going to play out. I mean, but yeah, maybe, maybe we would have lethal with that. Hard to say. to Poros. Hmm. It's not bad. I'm 
Vladimir or Crimson Awakener. <laughs> Dying to Poros is the cutest death imaginable. <laughs> Basically, I'm just going to wait a little bit on the Vladimir and, and kind of wait for Vladimir to have uh, to have regen. Like, so they don't just, like, you know, block Vladimir with, like, with the 2-2. And, uh, yeah, I'd rather them just block, like, the Crimson Awakener. But we're going to be doing that. This is like eight damage right here. Crimson Disciple into Demolitionist into Demolitionist. That's just eight damage. Eight surprise damage. Heart of the Fluffed. Heart of the Fluffed. I'm sorry, opponent. I was thinking, oh, it's summon. I was thinking I put that in hand. Hmm, I guess I should have read that card better. I was thinking I put that in hand, not summon. My bad. My bad. Heart of the Flood. Heart of the Flood. Maybe I should have just played Hecarim last turn. And take an eight, and then I would have been able to go straight to attackers. That would have been a, that would have been a better play. Could have some, yeah, that would have been a better play for me. But just trying to do a bunch of damage. You know, like if this happens, they take nine, they go down to six, and then at, the next turn we have disciple, demolitionist, demolitionist. To finish them off, that's the plan. It's probably casting Poro Snacks here. Keep this thing alive. Oh, so now they go to eight. Okay, okay. I feel like they should have had the five five block my five five, and then brittle steel the five two. They could have saved an additional three life by going that way, and then I would also have a five two in play instead of a five five. me again just to be sure <laughs> all right two more mana Black Powder Grenade. If they don't break, they burn. Alright, two and one. It's a pretty strong combo. Disciple Demolitionist. It does... Just those two cards together do 20% of your life total. So having another one that's 40% of your life total just took out. That's a lot. Ooh. Vimiting a... That's gone. This gone. 
Vimer is a deck. Uh, it's always satisfying to win against, but don't win against it all the time. Because for myself, I know other people, it's, you know, like Pilfered Goods or Unyielding Spirit, things like that. Probably the... And it's not like it's that bad anyway, but probably the card that I would say is the most tilt-inducing for myself is probably Heimerdinger. If I had to choose one. Make the Empire proud. Let none disturb my meditation. <clears throat> hmm. Strike at their foundations. If I must, as fate wills. If I must. I should be attacking these the other order. I guess they can't they can't have the lifesteal barrier. They they need one more mana, so never mind. Let a Mystic Shot kill both of those. If that Awakener was really a good play or not. So that's pretty good. I'll definitely trade champions. Vladimir for Vi. That's like as good as we can do. And also they just used a Flash of Brilliance. So they do have a Heimer. That's one Flash of Brilliance gone. So that's good for me too. I was kind of expecting like twin disciplines. Um, which would have been worse. No, they still have more Flash of Brilliance. That's the best possible thing to have. Oh my gosh. Wow, just opponents just living the life over there. Living the life. Oh, the score got bugged. That happens sometimes when they just do, like, space. Yeah, maybe I should have just gone Rekindler first before attacks. I should have just done that. Well, 
Want to be able to respond now. They play spell. I respond. With file feast to kill Heimerdinger. They haven't had twin disciplines so far. They've had they've had some good opportunities to play twin disciplines, but it's definitely possible they have that. Could grab the four one. Getting rid of that, and so they get to kill something. Probably Hecarim, but maybe they they're gonna try Vladimir. But I'm I'm. I mean, I guess they can't kill Vladimir unless they play another thing. All right, so we're going to just glimpse beyond here, so they don't get to gain the life. And then do I trade? No, because I don't trade because then Vladimir does three damage, right? So no blocks. The Will of Ionia Rekindler, I wouldn't be that mad. I wouldn't be mad at that. The order rewards its faithful. Let it flow. There's the one two punch. You act, but do not see. So if they go lifesteal barrier again. Uh, then I'm gonna be vengeance. barrier gun. Alright, but we'll still go Vengeance. This is not great. If they have, you know, five points of burn, we could die. Another Demolitionist. Transfusion. This is not great. They cannot hide. <laughs> I can't kill them now. All right, thanks, Polar. Have a good one. Yeah, I can't kill them. Let's see. How do I how do I actually kill them? You know, Vladimir doesn't get through. Doesn't have the ability to get through. My crappy hand.
don't think I glimpsed beyond Vlad. You know, even with another in hand. That's a good draw. That's a good draw. Because that's multiple bodies. Like, if they try to kill it, um, you know, like, I'd still get another body for the Vladimir. They're drawing two. I'm going to draw two also. Really, Vile Feast? Because basically right now, I guess I guess they could, like, you know, I attack, they have, like, they have Will of Ionia, they bounce, I can't stop that. It would have been nice to have the Vile Feast before that other card resolved. The problem here with playing it right now is I don't know if they'll have, like, seven damage of burnt. Like, they could have, worst case scenario is get excited, Mystic Shot, Mystic Shot. And then, you know, they do that all in response to this Vile Feast. That's my worst case scenario. Sweet. But I don't think we can really wait, so I think we need um, I think we need it in play. One suffers, another thrives. I just think we need another another uh, attacker in play. Feel and grace to tear your breath away. Bottoms off. Spring does not pity winter. You cannot escape. All right, they're still alive. Demolitionist. Demolitionist. Nope. Close. Eminently logical. Need to do one damage. That's it. They've already played three Flash of Brilliance. <laughs> Can I go down to five? Just played a Mystic Shot last turn. Can I afford to go to five? They've played two Mystic Shots so far. So they'd have to have, I mean, they haven't played a Get Excited yet. And they could, they could just go Twin Disciplines here too. Dang, I guess so. Man, this is not good. Yeah, this is not good. Just Crimson Disciple or Crimson Aristocrat. That's all we needed. Or, or Imperial Demolitionist. That's all we needed. We needed one of those two, two drops. Uh, we haven't been able to find them. I was certainly considering playing Ruination, though, just to kill this 3-1. I was definitely considering it. Dang, Disciple would be our best card to draw. Disciple is just a win. Please don't have burn spells. Yay, no burn spells. Let's go. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not very good with Ezreal decks. I played an Ezreal deck, so it was a donation deck, um, on, like, two days ago. I played it in Ezreal deck, but didn't do that well with it. I, d I don't really know any, like, real good Ezreal decks, and, and I just haven't, I just don't, like, that's, like, the one card that, you know, y'all probably, everybody probably has, like, a card that they just don't really win with. That's, that's my card. I, I'm not good with Ezreal for some reason. All right, same, same game, same matchup, same matchup. Pretty ugly hand, very expensive stuff. Uh, Calling strikes great against timer, but doesn't even get around twin discipline. Still, man, this is disgusting. I will be surprised if we win this. Wait, where's Crimson Disciple? Yuck. Remember the objectives. That's not good. Strike at the foundations. Yeah, Vlad does to every other every other thing that's attacking besides itself, Vlad targets. So it does it does champions and stuff too. These Ruinations have, like, Ruination, I think, is a good card, but they have looked just been, they've just been dead cards in our, in our hand. Now having two of them is rough. Like, while I do think Ruination's good, it just hasn't been good for us. In any of these games. Okay, so Vlad, but if you have two Vlads, they don't damage each other. It's good to know, I didn't realize that. So now we'll have two two twos. Late disciple. It's too late for you. You are late. You are late. I'll try anyone. Sweet. Love that. Love seeing you know, like that's a lot of mana gone. <clears throat> I mean, I also just am wasting a bunch of mana here every turn, but I like seeing them do it. All right, we'll be able to just go straight into attacking with Hecarim. Take nine.
So yeah, the problem with playing Curse Keeper is I don't have... Um, I don't have mana for Ruination now if they would have gone crazy with a whole bunch of 3-1s. Feast. I hope that was their only twin disciplines. Hey, good job, Save Moi. You finally reached Masters. Way to go. Not an easy thing to do. Good job. Good job, Reaching Masters. Resolve. Resolve. Ruination. Resolves. It's only a click away. Get him, Hecarim. Let's get him. Boo. Boo. Uh, so they bounce the two mana 4-4 four, four when I have two mana. That seems kind of silly, right? Seems kind of silly. At least we didn't get that rekindler value. <clears throat> could or could have just, just done that during combat, and not not before combat. Yeah, just during combat would have worked. All right, but we got a four-one there with Vladimir Hecarim. Um, both of our two champions looked awesome. Both Vladimir and Hecarim, they were great. Um, and they're great together. You know, Hecarim brings a whole bunch of extra attackers for you, and Vladimir wants you to have a whole bunch of attackers for its deal damage and, and drain thing. We're also leveling up Vladimir real easily, to be honest with our deck. A uh, pretty sweet deck. You know, it's we got our harrowing. Um, you know, Ruination helped, you know, saved us that last game, you know, after I talked bad about it. It helped, really helped save us that last game. But, um, awesome. So there we go. Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave any comments as well. Always love seeing those comments too. But thank you so much for watching some Vladimir Hecarim, and I'll see you for the next video.